Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism of Raw Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.11. Today was the 55th anniversary of the airing of the first episode of Star Trek and so I decided to try and make the Enterprise, the original Enterprise NCC-1701 in Blender uh, with the intention of eventually adding some special features but first of all I needed to check whether something this large is full scale, 288 meters uh, in length and so given the full scale, whether I could make the textures look halfway decent despite its size, because after all we have certain limitations in Curl Space Program, normally we can't use too high a texture resolution for parts, and, and of course we end up hitting RAM limits if we go really overboard. But anyway, here it is. Uh, according to the Star Trek te technical manual, I got it was uh, from 1986 and that said that the mass of it was 180,000 tons. I've got it close to that so we're not quite there. I don't know about the canonicity of that particular technical manual. Um, the shader color, I've got a little bit metallic. I might want to underdo that on the body and especially that bridge but you can see the state of it right now. I don't have windows yet. Uh, we'll be putting those in afterwards. Uh, that, that is not a difficult thing to do. Uh, the difficult part, if I had to say anything, the decals are an uh, interesting thing and I need to work on that too. Uh, but the difficult part in this case was actually I wanted the shuttle hanger at the very least. Now I might eventually do more than just a shuttle hanger, but if I can get down here. So this is just a showcase video and also testing whether I can get the thrusters to work in space. Uh, I don't have full engines yet. The warp nacelles do not have warp capability. I have made a Enterprise with procedural fairings and procedural parts and KSP Interstellar before. If you uh, want to check out that video you can just type in NCC-1701 on my channel search for the video and you'll find it uh, maybe I'll link it in the video description but uh, yeah so I've, I've used procedural fairings procedural parts and the KSP interstellar modules and so eventually what I'll do is add the KSP interstellar modules to the warp nacelles but I needed to check if everything else worked before I went to that level so there's opening the bay doors. The interior of the bay doesn't look like in the series. I actually, this probably looks better anyway, but uh, uh, eventually there'll be props and uh, probably uh, floors. I'm, I'm not gonna like create floors throughout all this. Uh, it's not lagging too much at least considering the size of the thing and you know, pretty large colliders. We'll see when it's actually in flight. The whole, oh, I've got a little gap there. See, those are the kinds of things I need to check out. Um, but the animation seems to work. Uh, it goes a little bit fast though, but yeah. So we have that and some of you will probably be able to point out things that I've got wrong or something. But uh, I've taken some liberties on the shape here because it's a tough shape uh, right back here, especially. That, that especially is a very difficult shape to figure out and not all the images are in agreement or uh, uh, sort of and of course there's the different versions of the Enterprise complicating things especially the A some photos are of the A instead or the refit so anyway also there need to be lines on this right now it's very smooth sort of smooth it's a little bit wrinkly actually uh, I tried to give it a little bit of character but uh, so the paint job is a little bit iffy but anyway we will work on things but for now first of all can it get can I get it outside without everything blowing up it is huge after all and massive and we've got four launch clamps I'm gonna I don't know if I should auto start everything uh, as far as parts go the bridge is a separate part then the sauce right now the saucer uh, this part and the body are and the warp nacelle struts are one part that's all joined but I'll separate them out later uh, that was just for convenience for today and then the each of the warp nacelles is a separate part 
So that's how it's laid out right now. And I've got RCS thrusters and basically we, we've got enormous amounts of MH and NTO <laughs> in order to run the RCS thrusters. The RCS thrusters on here right now are 700 kilonewton RCS thrusters. We'll see how that works out for us. But there's no real engine on here right now. So, okay, let's see what happens. I won't auto strut yet. Uh, this is just out to the runway. If integrating the KSB Interstellar engine features works well, then I can do some other sci-fi craft. Ooh. Well, I mean, that's fair enough. <laughs> I, I didn't realize they still had destructible facilities in this. As you can see, this does have uh, robust colliders. Uh-oh, uh, that is water there. Uh-oh, um, let's cheat it into space. Now, when I made the procedural part and procedural fairing... Actually, does it, it probably floats, doesn't it? Uh, procedural part, procedural fairing, and KSB interstellar part version of the Enterprise. Uh, that I actually launched from the ground. But of course, Enterprise was built in space. So we'll just take this liberty right now. Oh. Uh, uh oh. Oh, okay. Uh, double clicking worked, I guess. Okay, is there. There's Earth. Okay, so I want to see how good it looks out here is the main thing. All right, RCS. Okay, RCS enabled. Is that enabled? Yeah, well, it actually reads max thrust uh, 1.4 mega newtons. So it's used, uh, reading the RCS as thrust prograde. It's also got a minor reaction wheel. Well, okay, so it's definitely using the RCS thruster and the minor reaction wheel but you can see how quickly our mmh and nto are being used but it's not turning very fast oh i i didn't notice our orbital velocity is zero normally when you cheat into space it doesn't orbit yeah okay now it's with full orbital velocity okay that was a minor flaw there but yeah the size of this is stellar <laughs> well not quite, but it's looking pretty good out here. Obviously, when you get up close to it, because of the texture limitations, it doesn't look perfect. But I think this is workable in terms of trying to use it for further things. But this is just first draft in honor of the 55th anniversary. And you can tell me uh, what do you think I need to touch up on it, but... Uh, Yep, uh, for less than a day's work, I think it's looking pretty good so far and encourages me in terms of potentially doing other out there sci-fi-ish designs. But we have to implement the fancy KSP Interstellar engines, the antimatter impulse engines and the warp engines and see if that works out. I also wanted to do the Mass Effect Normandy especially. That one I want to do the interiors on if possible. But okay, well, uh, force roll zero, can we do that? E uh, even though the thrusters are super powerful, they're still producing those tiny little plumes. You can see where I place, uh, there's uh, sort of a block here, a block there, and then a block here, and a block there. <laughs> Invisible RCS blocks, but another portion that uh, the the schematics that I saw didn't really cover very well is right back here. I also know there's supposed to be sort of a line right there that I don't have. There are all sorts of little fiddly bits, but okay. It's a, it's a little bit more wrinkly than I wanted in this view. Anyway, so that is the progress report and I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.